Hello and welcome back to Road Trivia, the once a day road trip trivia quiz. Today's episode, day number 321 of the 365 day trivia road trip. Today's quiz comes from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, Jude and Rick Oskin have submitted a couple of quizzes as a pair, but now they've submitted two quizzes, one from Jude, one from Rick. Today we're playing Jude's quiz, 21 questions, 20 up front and a question 21 tiebreaker at the end. Let's get started. Question number one, widely seen as an indigenous art form, this kind of carving was done primarily by the crews of deep water whaling vessels. The first written reference to this art was in 1826 and it reached its golden age in the 1830s and 40s. What is this art form predominant in New England? This specific type of carving is called scrimshaw. Question number two, Gemini 3 was the first manned mission in the Gemini program. Riding in the capsule were Gus Grissom and John Young. Planned for only three orbits that would last under five hours, at about two hours in, Young presented Grissom with some contraband. Grissom asked, what is it? And what was Young's reply? What type of contraband did they sneak into space. John Young brought up a corned beef sandwich. Question number three, December 25th, 1826 at West Point was far from normal. Cadets were stumbling from their barracks barefoot cursing and still drunk from the night before. Windows were broken, plates and cups strewn about the floor. What name was given to this infamous Christmas party hullabaloo? It was known as the Eggnog Riot or the Grog Mutiny. Question number four. This chubby imp with a pointy head was dreamed up by Florence Pretz in 1909. It is said to be a mythical good luck figure who represents things as they ought to be. Today, St. Louis University uses the imp as their good luck mascot. What is the name of this creature? The answer is the Billiken. Question number five, I was born in 1767. At the age of 13, I became a Patriot Courier during the American Revolution. I was an American lawyer, planner, and statesman. In the fall of 1828, I won the vote for President of the United States of America, and I am one of the most portrayed chief executives in history. Who am I? My name is Andrew Jackson. And keep that in mind for the next couple questions. Question number six, now that you know my name, during my presidency, a gift was presented to me. Arriving on New Year's Day, 1836 from Sandy Creek, New York, it was proudly displayed in the foyer of the White House for two years, at which time I invited everyone to come and take a bite. What was this gift? Or what was the gift made of? The answer is cheese, specifically a 1,400 pound block of cheddar cheese. Question number seven. While I was involved in the Revolutionary War, I was detained by the British. One of the officers slashed my face and hand with his sword, which left me with painful lifelong scars. I was 13 at the time. Why was I struck so vehemently? The crime for which I was struck was refusing an order. I refused to polish his boots. Question number eight, last question here. It isn't really all about me. I lived life as a warrior, a champion, and in retirement, a gentleman farmer at the Hermitage in Tennessee. That is where I passed away in 1845. How old was I?
When I died, I was 78 years old. Question number nine. In 1905, soda pop had just become the most popular drink on the market. A child named Frank Epperson tried to make his own at home and he accidentally left his concoction on the porch overnight and when the temperatures dropped below freezing, his discovery in the morning led to what famous invention? Frank Epperson invented it. Originally they called them Epsicles, but eventually they were called Popsicles. Popsicle is the answer. Question number 10. This activity consists of gathering, assessing, creating, and presenting news and information. Its purpose is to inform people of what really happened that they might not have known about otherwise. What is this profession that uses these skills to produce their work? The profession we're looking for is a journalist or journalism. Question number 11, once plentiful and always free to the public, in some cases ornate and serving up to four persons at a time, these first appeared in 1859 in London. Crowds gathered to see it being turned on for the first time. What are these harder and harder to find liquid dispensers called? The liquid dispenser we're looking for is a public drinking fountain. Question number 12. This notable building in the New York skyline is Art Deco in its styling. Its architectural design was drawn up by William Van Allen and the building took less than two years to complete, building four floors per week. What is the name of this building that first opened in 1930? The answer is the Chrysler Building. Question number 13. One of America's earliest aviation pioneers, she became known as the Flying Flapper of Freeport. She rivaled Amelia Earhart performing spectacular stunt flying, including swooping her plane under the four East River bridges in New York. Who is this aviator that earned her pilot's license at 16 years old? This young aviator, her name was Eleanor Smith. Question number 14, originally named in 1885 for New York lawyer Charles E. Rushmore. The mountain that now displays the faces of four U.S. presidents is officially called the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. When looking straight at the sculpture, which president's face is the furthest to the right? The furthest to the right is Sir Abraham Lincoln. Question number 15. The flag of the Irish Republic has three colors in vertical blocks, green, white, and orange. The white block in the middle represents the peace that someday may be found between which two groups that are represented by the green and the orange. The white represents the peace or the truce between the Catholics and the Protestants. Question number 16. This is probably a fact you didn't know. The shamrock is not the national symbol of Ireland. St. Patrick probably used the shamrock while preaching about the Trinity, but it is not the national symbol. Can you name the real symbol of Ireland? You'll see it on every bottle of Guinness. The answer is the harp, specifically a Gaelic harp. Question number 17. In 1955, Sears tried to print the number of one of their stores where children could call Santa Claus and tell him what they wanted for Christmas. 
However, the number printed was for the NORAD hotline. What phenomenon was born from this error? Now kids were calling NORAD looking for Santa, so they actually started the Santa Tracker that you still see on TV every Christmas. Question number 18. They were a legitimate fashion trend in the 1950s that reached their peak in the 1980s and in 2002 they made a resurgence. Once for fashion, they are now for fun and millions are spent each year on these items. Before you head out to your holiday party, be sure to get your ugly on with what clothing item? This popular ugly item is a sweater, or your ugly Christmas sweater. Question number 19. Now known as the go-to place for how-to, live streaming, history, news, trivia, and all sorts of entertainment, this company was first intended to be a dating site. Founded by three people from the American banking service PayPal, what is this world's largest video sharing platform? I think everybody should have got this one. It might just be about speed on this one. The answer is YouTube. And question 20, YouTube's slogan was initially tune in, hook up, but nobody was uploading videos. So they pivoted their model, figuring any video is better than no videos. YouTube's co-founder Jawad Karim uploaded the very first video ever and it was a video of him where? The title of the very first video ever was Me at the Zoo. So he was at the zoo. All right, that is it for today. Thank you for watching today's episode of Road Trip You. Thank you to Jude Oskin for several things. One, she has now participated in sending in several quizzes along with her husband Rick, and we'll play his individual quiz later but they've sent in a lot of good quizzes. She had a lot of great questions today, and she sent us a little gift for little baby Quizlet. I'm actually building her a, a uh, bookshelf right now, and these are gonna go on there. When I finish it up and I'm able to display them properly, I'll post a picture either here on a video or over on our Facebook page. So thank you, Rick and Jude, and thank you for the quiz today. Here's question 21, YouTube ended its beta stage and officially launched to the public, serving more than 2 million people per day on the website. What year was YouTube fully launched? YouTube officially hit the internet in 2005. The answer is 2005. Whichever player got closest to 2005 is going to win the point. Congratulations. And if it was a tie, they just won the whole game. Double congratulations.